As the crystal industry grows and more people become involved in it, you're seeing more retailers, wholesalers, distributors, manufacturers, and navigating that could be very difficult, especially if you're getting into the crystal industry. And one of the things that I think is really important in this industry is manufacturing fair trade and ethical sourcing, making sure that things are done the right way because we don't want our material or our industry to be affected negatively by um, unethical practices. And so one of the questions that should arise from that is how do I know if my material is being sourced ethically or not? And I think that number one, it boils down to trusting your supplier. But sometimes trusting your supplier is not enough. It's not enough legwork, it's not enough diligence. Especially now that the industry's growing, everyone's saying they're fair trade, everyone's saying that they're ethically sourcing, which is not really the case or the truth by any means whatsoever. Everyone's saying that they own mines or they have mines or they direct source from the mine. Also not true. In our case, we have our own distribution and manufacturing, which we do out of Nepal. So I think it's really important that we are able to show that information. Uh, and this is my attempt to prove to you that I have done my legwork and my diligence to bring ethically sourced fair trade crystals into the market. This manufacturing that you're seeing is actually ran by me and my partner in Nepal. Everyone working in our manufacturing warehouse is a consensual adult and gets paid double to triple of what minimum wage is. And so that's one of the reasons why you might see my cost being a little bit higher. The, the only way to, uh, to ensure that the stuff is being done right is, is, is just like this, is how we're doing it right now, making sure that we do it ourselves. Uh, this is our room for tumbling stone. There's a, a polishing wheel in there that's spinning the stones around and grinds them down to a little bit more of a uniform shape. That's one of the things people like about our tumbled stone is that we do this. Most companies don't do this process. The industry primarily is about how do I do things the cheapest, quickest, fastest way. Uh, that has not been my approach and I think it's one of the things that separates me and, and from the minds from the pack is that I'm not looking to do things the quickest, cheapest, fastest way. So uh, here you can see, this is literally the same material that's being manufactured right now. This is a rainbow moonstone polish. You can see it's rounded just as it is in the video. And uh, li literally this is the, the, from the same batch. So, I mean, this is the material that you're seeing manufactured in this video right now. One of the reasons why our bracelets typically are a little bit more expensive than a lot of the other ones that are on the market is because of this process right here. The, the, the bracelets you get from me, this is how they're being made one by one, by hand, time, care, effort, energy going into it. And, and I think that it's, it's really important that you get to see this process and be like, oh, okay, there is a huge difference between what I'm getting mass produced in, in unethical situations versus what you're seeing here now, which is a grown man uh, making bracelets by hand and actually enjoys doing this, uh, chooses to do this. Uh, again, we have uh, around seven or eight workers that constantly make bracelets. One of the reasons I'm more expensive is because of the process of getting the material and how it's mined and manufactured and distributed. Even there's processes in shipping that are not great. Um, I also, one of the things that people don't know is that it's very common in this industry for people to steal and not pay their bills. And you would be shocked at how common that of a practice that actually is where people just don't pay their bills. And one of the things that you can rest assured with is that the material that you get from me, the people who mined it and manufactured it were compensated as best as I could possibly do it. Uh, and so I think that's why people also have a lot of success with my material. I think if you put material that you got from me on a table with material that you got from several other people, I would like to imagine, uh, I would even say the proof would be in the pudding that my material would sell the best. I do believe that stones uh, are capable of holding an energy. And in the process of that, you want to make sure the people that are mining them and extracting them and taking care of them throughout the process are decent human beings. You know, it's really important that we make sure that the people working on this stuff are enjoying what they're doing. They're happy to do what they do so that when these rocks wind up in our houses, that they're filled with good energy. And, and that can't happen if they're being mined by, ch by children through, through slave labor or child slave labor. Uh, they can't be when they're being mined by people who only care about money. And so it's really important that whenever I work with someone or I partner up with someone that I'm checking who those people are. 
this business is, is something that lacks sustainability at this point, especially because now that it's become what it's become and it's mainstream and everyone knows that there's a lot of money to make, all of the, the demons come out. All of the bad people come out and want to get their hands on it. So it's become extremely difficult to get sustainable and ethical material because now the bad people know that they can make a lot of money off of this industry and it's quite easy to do um, if they can find a very cheap way to get there. Uh, they'll undercut everybody and that's what's happening in this industry right now and it's what I've been campaigning to teach people it's just the problem is is that most people even when they wave that flag of oh I care about ethics and fair trade and they don't they only care about how do I get the cheapest thing possible and I'm telling you and I've said this many times in the past I could today if I wanted to go dark I could save myself 30 to 50 percent on the back end that's how much money I could save myself. So let's just say that I made a million dollars. Instead of making, I don't know, $200,000 off that million dollars, I could probably make 700,000. I could probably make around 700 if I went dark. That's how much money I sacrificed to remain ethical. That's what my ethics and my standards and my morals are worth to me. That's how much they're worth to me. And then I don't go dark. And that's what I was saying too, kind of at one point was, one of the smart things that I've done is that when I ran into a situation that was a good situation, a clean situation, I took whatever I could possibly get my hands on. And it's, and it's lasted me. I still have lapis lazuli, rough lapis that was mined 10 years ago. That's clean material, you know, and there's a lot of material that I don't have and they don't carry because the only people that I found mining that material or handling that material, I just knew we're not good people, so I just don't carry it. So someone sometimes asks me, oh, do you have this and this and this material? No, I don't have it. And the reason why I don't have it is not because I can't get it. It's been always pretty easy for me to get mining contracts, largely because I'm willing to pay for my material up front. You don't have to wait for me. I'm not going to play games with you and, and pretend that I'm going to pay you and then not pay you uh, or create fake banks to send you fake money which is again uh, something you wouldn't really believe happens but it happens so frequently in this industry you know people got to know me and trust me and understand that I'm going to do everything in my power to keep my word and thank God a million times I always have kept my word and I think that that leads me into a place where when advantageous things are happening I'm getting a phone call hey there's this really amazing new material that we're sourcing there's not a lot of it do you want it yes I want it so that's part of it. You know, one of the things you don't realize is that when you're doing things the right way and you're trying to be a, a, a good human being, people want to work with you and people want to do for you and help you and give to you. I, I love this industry. I love this business. And that's one of the things that allows me to, to care for it the way that I care for it is that I genuinely love it and I want to protect it. And I want to do whatever I can to protect the people that are in this industry and that care about it the way that I care about it.